Hi. In this log I will be talking about my third person, root motion driven NPC character setup for my FPS game project. This setup is also a child of my character base actor and shares most functionality with my FPS setup like taking damage, equipping and using weapons and interaction with objects. Only NPCs will use this setup but it is also controllable for testing purposes. It is also made of separate torso, head, and legs meshes. They can be removed, or new parts can be added for new character types. These meshes are fairly low poly for modern standards but it gives more flexibility in terms of adding new characters or modifying them. I can quickly combine different high poly character parts or even scans together and create a new mesh with minimal work. Legs and head meshes copy their poses from the torso mesh. So only torso is animated by the blueprint. It uses root motion animations that are driven by the character input vector. It's compatible with both player and AI input. For AI input to work you have to use, use acceleration for paths, option under, nav movement. It uses different animation sets for walking, running, sprinting, crouch walking, and strafing. These movement modes have directional starting and stopping animations. These are selected by comparing the desired direction and character orientation. It uses a single state machine for locomotion. The resting state is called break. It has random idle animations and used while the characters are not alert. It also has pivot animations, these are available at higher speeds. You can see it going in a loop of states, occasionally visiting pivot animations when changing directions. It's also possible to crouch, state machine follows a different loop while doing so. It has similar starting and stopping states, also 180 left and right pivots. State machine enters and exits crouching using short animations when idle, it bypasses those when moving. Character uses two different states for jumping, one for in place and one for forward. Jumping is done by using an animation state at specific times of these jump start animation. Landing is similar, if the state machine is still at forward jump start when landing it plays a forward landing animation. This is good for jumping across gaps. Like I said, this character type uses root motion for movement and rotation. This enables more control on how a character turns at various speeds. Blending the upper body with different weapon states enable reusing the unarmed locomotion animations with all types of weapons. It also uses weapon sway animations to make NPCs look more realistic when rotating fast. They also work when moving or crouching. Reloads and some interactions are done by using animation montages that are only affecting the upper body. That way they won't interfere with locomotion. Upper body animations like aiming, running with weapons and weapon sway are all cached in animation graph root and can be used in multiple states or in anim graph again. You can see that same blend space for rifle aiming is used in all states. Recoils are done by adding two animations for backwards recoil and muzzle climb. These are single frame additive animations. Strafing is done by using a single blend space. This can be mirrored for some weapon types. 
rotating is controlled by the character blueprint while aiming, since these animations do not handle turning. Aim offsets are added later in the animation blueprint. There are a couple of variations for weapon types and one for unarmed. Attack animations are stored in the weapons themselves and triggered from there. This enables different attack sets for different weapons. They are root motion montages so they also move the character accordingly. Some enable attacking in different directions. There are different slots for different actions. Default slots are used for full body animations like attacking and dying. While the upper body slot is used for reloading. Upper body blending is handled by this setup. This enables inserting upper body animations in between. When taking damage characters play an additive damage animation for individual body parts as well as full body stagger animations. These animations are selected by incoming damage direction, character location that is hit and the damage type variation. There are three damage type variations for each weapon. These trigger light and heavy versions of stagger and death animations. While the knife has cut low damage type which causes short stagger animations and less impactful deaths, the hatchet has the high variation which can push characters and even decapitate them. Weapons have assigned kill moves for human characters which I will go in detail in a later video. Small firearms work the same way, they cause shorter stagger and death animations. This pistol uses a bullet low damage type. Some weapons like assault rifles fall in between and has equal chance of playing high and low damage animations on target. Larger weapons will always send characters flying upon death. Characters simulate at specific times indicated by the death animation or when the character hits a wall after death. It's also possible to damage body parts upon death with larger calibers. They use placeholder effects for now which I will work on later in production. I implemented some more minor features to characters that I will show in later videos. I will also go in depth with the base weapon actor after I clean and organize the blueprint for it. It works quite well but the event graph is a mess. You might have noticed improvements with the weapon animations. I used a FPS animation pack from the marketplace as a base which I will link in the description below. Like always, let me know if you have suggestions or questions. Also if there is something else specific you want to know more about. Thanks for watching, bye.